having problems with track performance? There are many things that can cause your track's performance to slow, and of course just as many solutions. In this lesson, we'll discuss a few of the most common problems and what you can do to correct them. I'll discuss each problem and solution separately, but keep in mind that in many cases, you'll probably be dealing with a combination of issues that need to be addressed. We'll start with one of the easiest causes of frame rate lag to identify, and that's physics objects. Large glued groups with active physics or a lot of physics objects can easily lead to problems, so start by identifying all the physics objects in the area where your track is lagging. If you can remove any physics objects, that's a good next step. Also see if you can replace any objects with animation using the object position event. You will not want to use animation on objects that interact with the bike or rider though. An object being moved with animation does not have the same properties as a physics object and will usually not yield the expected results. With that in mind, replacing physics objects with animated objects is most useful with background objects. Another possible cause of problems is too many objects, especially when they are more complex objects. Spam a bunch of cars in your map and you'll quickly see what I'm talking about. So along with physics objects, just take a look at objects in general. Usually you can get away with quite a few objects before you'll see any problems. But if you're having performance issues and you have a lot of objects, there are a few things you can try. Obviously getting rid of any unnecessary objects is good. Test the track a few times and see if there are any objects that you never really see or aren't necessary, and delete whatever you can. If an object never needs to interact with physics objects, you can also alter its physics properties. In the advanced physics menu of the object's properties, scroll down the physics type and select decoration only. This will remove all physics properties from the object. It will still visually exist in the game world, but has no physical presence, so if another object touches it, that object will just pass right through. However, this method will only improve performance on objects that at some point are within the active physics range. So the physics type of objects far enough in the background will have no effect on performance. The next thing we'll check out is lights and effects. Lights, especially the ones that cast shadows, can easily cause problems if there are too many. Usually, if you use too many lights, you'll run into other problems before you have any slowdown issues, but not always. If you have lights that may be causing problems, there are a few fixes you can try. Obviously, lowering the number of lights will help. You could also try lowering the range of the light. The less the lights interact with each other, the better. So whether it's deleting lights, lowering range, or just moving them farther apart, it should help. With directional lights, you can also try changing the shadow type. A static shadow type will not cast real-time shadows, but instead only cast shadows for the objects in front of the light at the start. This is easier for the game to process, and therefore can help improve performance. Keep in mind, however, when altering shadow type, that if the bike, rider, or any other object passes in front of the light during play, it will not cast a shadow. Another thing to keep in mind is that many effects like fire, explosions, and fireworks also emit light so include those when you're checking for lights. If you have a number of light emitting effects in one area, say for example a bunch of fire effects, one helpful thing you can do is turn the light off on all the effects and use one or two point lights to simulate the light from the fire. You can even tie the intensity to a random data source to get it to flicker a little. Of course effects on their own can also potentially cause problems. Even non-light emitting effects like waterfalls and smoke can slow performance if there are too many. So check the number of effects and delete some wherever possible. Another thing to consider is the driving line. Having a curved driving line can be a problem, especially when it curves in a way that makes more of the track visible at one time. Since the draw distance is quite large, if you can see part of your track in the background, it considerably increases the amount of stuff the game has to render. Unfortunately, if you're very far along in building, uncurving a driving line can be a tremendous amount of work. You can first try doing things like turning off lights and effects that are in the distance section of the track, and only have them active when the player is riding that area. In general, it's best if you can anticipate possible issues with a curved driving line before you build. One other thing you can try is to reduce the draw distance. There are two options you can use to reduce draw distance in the custom environment setting. Max view distance will reduce the overall draw distance of the game world, while max object view will only reduce draw distance for objects. 
Obviously, having to render less background will help your track's performance, but keep in mind that it will also increase the chances of having objects pop up as you near them. To counter the pop-up, you can try increasing the fog amount, but this will limit your options for different environment looks. One final thing to consider when optimizing is multiplayer. Multiplayer requires more of the game's processing power, so if you're on the cusp of having issues in single player, you'll definitely see problems in multiplayer. For supercross tracks and even single lane trials tracks, keep this extra performance need in mind when testing, and before you upload to Track Central, do some tests with four players in a private multiplayer lobby to see how it will perform under pressure. These are just a few ways to go about optimizing your track. As I said at the start, if you're having performance problems, you'll often be dealing with a combination of issues, so keep them all in mind as you check over your map. Track optimization is a balancing act. If you're having performance issues, you'll have to make concessions somewhere, so do your best to remove and alter items in a way that will improve performance, but leave the look and feel of your track intact. 